What's up, sister? It's your girl, Danielle, and welcome back to the Pretty Powerful Podcast. We as women will typically do something for someone else way before we will do it for ourselves. So once I shifted that belief that, okay, this isn't about me. It's not about my fears. It's not about my struggles. It's not about how I look. It's not about how, what the, what I say, like, or how I say it. It's about how can I serve and support the person on the other end of the screen that is going to be watching this today. You and I have known each other for so long and we started back in, I don't even know what, like 2014 or something like that. Like with you helping me with my social media and me getting visible. And then I've watched you go through this whole crazy fun journey that we're going to talk about today. So I'm so freaking excited um, and honored to have the Chrissy Connor in the house. And I'm going to let her introduce herself here in a second. But what you need to know is she's an expert visibility strategist, transforms your audience into raving fans or captivating content that converts. But more importantly, her belief is that if you blend strategy, emotional intelligence, responsibility, and uncomfortable actions to create your freedom-based business. And who doesn't want a freedom-based business? And also, obviously, Chrissy, as I know, you define yourself as an introvert, and yet you are all over the social media and everywhere, and yet you do it so confidently. So we're going to get into that. So Chrissy, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I did the little spiel, but tell us more like the fun stuff about who Chrissy is and how you kind of got to becoming like the visibility expert. Well, I don't know if it's fun stuff, but I'll tell you. (laughs) See, this is the hard stuff for me. Okay. um, So as Danielle said, I am an introvert. I never had the desire to get on video. That's fun, right? Um, So in my first business, I'm not going to go down that that whole rabbit hole. My first business, I prayed to God every night. Please, God, do not let Shark Tank or any of these news stations except my, I had a business partner, accept her proposal to put us on TV. I will die. That was pretty much my prayer. Every single night, praying to God, you know, I can't handle this. Don't do this to me. So from that business to this business, where I literally teach people how to get visible as an introvert, it's like a 180, right? Like here went the little, little Chrissy who prayed Chrissy had no confidence back then. Chrissy liked hiding in her basement and making skincare products to the Chrissy today that shows up. Now, I will be clear on this. I am, I can show up on video. I can show up like on a stage as long as I'm talking about my business, but like, don't sing happy birthday to me, or I'm going to like revert into my introverted hole because I don't want to be the center of attention for any other reason than if I get to serve and support you. So if we go back to being about me, it's off the table. It's always about you. So if I can spin it to make it about you, I'm good. But if I can't, I'm going to struggle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so much. That's so funny. So, okay. But okay. So at what point? Did you, you know, you said like you prayed to God, like, don't let this happen because I will die. How did you go from that? Like, where was the turning point where you're like, no, I'm going to do video. I'm going to do this. And like, what was the reason behind wanting to shift that? Well, after that business failed for multiple reasons, namely probably because I didn't want to get visible. Um, I learned how to do everything on social media and I learned how to do all the right things. And so I kind of shifted into that, that business model because all my friends were like, can you help us? Can you help us? Can you help us? I was like, sure. And then what ended up happening was you get a lot of clients and you realize, okay, how can I make more money? How can I scale this? I can't. If I need to take a week off, my business has to take a week off because there's no, there's only one of me. And so I realized I wanted to create a program and I did. And it was like the most dirt cheap program ever. It was $10 a month and I could not sell it because nobody knew who I was. And I think that was like a big eye opener because I got referrals from people who knew me, right? Or people that knew other people. And that's how I built my whole business up to that point. But 
because I wanted to sell something that was representative of me, right? Of me only. It just, it was harder. It was harder and no one knew who I was. And so I knew I had to make a decision, you know, are you willing to get on video? Are you willing to get visible? And it was this whole like metamorphosis, I guess, that I went through to get myself like, you know, to come out the other end as the butterfly because I was in a cocoon for a really long time because I rejected it. I resisted it. I didn't want video to be any part of my business because I wanted to be the behind the scenes girl. And so really to get my confidence on video, I had to shift it because we as women will typically do something for someone else way before we will do it for ourselves. So once I shifted that belief that, okay, this isn't about me. It's not about my fears. It's not about my struggles. It's not about how I look. It's not about how, what the, what I say, like, or how I say it. It's about how can I serve and support the person on the other end of the screen that is going to be watching this today. And I'm not going to say it was like instant, like, whew, I'm a superstar now. It still took time, but it was a lot easier to get myself on board with it once I made that decision that it wasn't about me. Yeah, I love it. The first thing that came to my mind when you said superstar, remember that movie? Was it called Superstar where she puts her hands under her armpits? Oh, yeah, it's that way. Yeah. Isn't it? And then she goes, superstar or whatever. And yeah. So sorry, that was totally. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's But that's okay. what I imagine. Now I'm always going to imagine you like before you do a video like superstar. <laughs> Um, so I'll okay. a video like that now. <laughs> um, okay. So what do you, how do you define visibility? I define visibility as being seen and heard. And I think there's multiple different ways that you can do that. I think the most effective medium is always going to be, is always going to be video. I, you can't get away from video. And if you want to cut through the noise, video is a huge way to be seen. But I do believe that there are people who are seen, but not heard or or let me preface this, they're seen, but they're not using their voice, right? They're doing trends and things like that. So they're not using their voice to get their message across, mm-hmm. which makes me really sad. Um, so I think you can be visible in multiple ways, but I think you're going to build trust with people much quicker through video. Yeah. So what would you say to the person who you mentioned before, like you wanted to be the behind the scenes girl? And I can totally relate to that. So mm-hmm. For people who are listening, who are like, I am that person, I'm the behind the scenes, but again, I have something to sell or I have something to say, like, how do they, what is like the first thing that they should do to like, like, try to get into more of that visibility and confidence to like, do the video? Honestly, I would, I say this all the time, because it would have been amazing if 2016, 2017, it would have been an option, but stories are really amazing. Mm. Not everybody sees them and they disappear in 24 hours. And then if you like it, you can turn it into a reel or a TikTok. So I would do that because it's almost like my cheater Facebook lives, which is where I went, you know, live, only me, then decided after I watched it 50 times, was it good enough to post and then turn it to friends or public? But I think, wait, stories- okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Was that your first? So that was the first video you ever did. Like the first 10 Facebook lives, a hundred percent. I did cheater Facebook lives. And by cheater Facebook lives. So just so I'm clear, you went private and did the live. So no one could see it except for you. Nope. Exactly. But when I went and made it public, it said Chrissy Connor was live. You were probably one of those people back in the day who said, oh my God, you went live and I missed it. Do you know how many messages I got? And I was like, I sure did. I was not telling them my secret because I was so mortified that I was too chicken to do it. I think that's a really good reminder though. Like you, you practiced, right? You didn't just click yeah. the go live for everybody. You were like, okay, I am still nervous. I am still this introvert. I'm still like struggling to be confident to be on video. So let me just try this for myself. And then yep. eventually like I'll work up the nerve essentially to like get to that point. So I think that's like a crucial thing to know here. And kind of like you're saying with stories, it's, it's a practice until you get yeah. to that point. So I love that. Like your first 10 were practices. But also, let me just be clear, Instagram caught on and they actually made that an option. So when you go Instagram live, you can do a test live. 
Oh, I did not know that. Yes, you can test live and nobody will be notified. So you can literally do a test live on Instagram now. So another thing you I could have done back then was create my own Facebook group and go live in my own Facebook group. But again, it did take the nerves off. And I think, I know it was a confidence issue because I was worried about what people would think. I was worried about what people would say about me. I was worried about like, what are they going to say behind my back? I was worried about saying um too much. I was worried about my major hives that crawl up my neck onto my face. And it's like this red rash that just shows up as I'm doing video, sometimes still shows up. Um, so I had all this confidence issues, right? And honestly, it was funny because my first real live video that I didn't cheat on was me making jello shots. And although I was a nervous wreck, I had zero fears that anybody would make fun of me because all my friends knew that I had the jello shot recipe down pat. I didn't need to look at a recipe. I had to bring all the jello shots to all the girls night out. So I knew I was actually going to save money by creating this Facebook live because now they knew how to make them because I was showing them. So literally I was the expert. So I was not concerned about that video. And I just had to honestly bring that confidence into everything I do and realize if somebody knows more than me, they're not my person. So it doesn't matter, right? If they say, oh, that's not how you do it. Or it's not how I would do it. And so I had to really shift all of that. But Jello Shots taught me a lot. <laughs> I feel like that, that needs to go on a sweatshirt. Jello Shots taught me a lot. It kind of rhymes. It's like a poem. It does. It's so good. <laughs> um, but I think that's also a teaching moment for all of us is that go, whether you're going live or you're making a TikTok or whatever you're doing, like make sure it's something that if it's one of your first ones, especially like do something that you know that like you're excited to talk about that helps you be a little bit more confident and in your zone um, until you're ready to talk about the other things. So what would you say as an introvert and as someone who works with lots of introverts, um, what is like, I don't want to say the first step because that's kind of what I just asked you, but like, what do you find a lot of introverts struggle with? Do you feel, okay, let me just say this. Can introverts be wildly successful or do you really have to be like a super extrovert to be like all over the place? Every one of my mentors are introverts. Hmm. Every single one of them which is a really funny thing. I think it's very interesting. And so no, you do not have to be all over the place and be an extrovert to make money. And it's funny because I do attract extroverts because there are some extroverts that are okay speaking in front of people, but they don't do well when it comes to live video because they don't have that instant, I don't want to say gratification, but they don't see, like, they don't see your face. So they don't know, like, they don't get that instant response. So they don't know to keep going, you know, because a lot of speakers read faces and you can't do that on live video, right? If you're on Zoom, that's one thing, but on live video, you can't. And so, um, so yeah, I think that when it comes to being an introvert, it's just one of those things that we get to push through and take up a little space, right? Um, just like I think being around people or in a room of people, like at a networking event or something like that, we get very exhausted as introverts. Video can probably wear us out a little faster than an extrovert. However, again, it's just like when you pull in the passion of what you love and what you want to talk about, it makes it seem less like work. It makes it seem less like this is uncomfortable for me. So when you can pull in that passion, I think it always supersedes the hard stuff. It might still, I, still be a little hard, but, or uncomfortable, but you can do it. Yeah. And what I, what I heard is that we might have the upper hand when it comes to video, because what you just said was that extroverts have a harder time because they can't see people's faces where I know for me, I'm like, I'll talk to a screen all day long, you know, like <laughs> I don't have to, I don't need your face. Like, I'm just going to exactly. assume that you're like smiling and happy and excited. And like, I'll just talk to the screen all day. Like that makes me more comfortable, I guess, than like being in a room full of people. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So I love that. So, okay. So Chrissy said it here first that the, it's actually a benefit to being an introvert. Um, okay. So what would, um, what is the thing? You ask this all the time. So I'm going to ask it of you. Okay. What is something, 
I was going to say this to the end, but we're going to use it now. What is something that you think in your head every day when you see, you can think of someone specific, don't give me a name, but like you could think of someone specific or just in general of like, oh my gosh, if they would just stop doing that or they'd start doing that, like they would be so much more successful. Like what is that thought in your head every day? Every day it's people who put out really good, honestly, really good typed content. And I want them just to say that. I want to hear it out of their mouth. I want to hear the passion behind it. And this is crazy because when I read a piece of content, right, it depends on my mood. It depends on what kind of mind shift, like mind frame I'm in right in that moment. And, but if you show up on video and you're talking to me, I see right there, I see your passion. You can literally shift my day, you can shift my moment, like you can shift my life, depending on what message it is you are bringing through that video, the way you show up, how passionate you are about it, how certain you are about it. And like, it's just, it's a different, I feel like it's a different game. It's a totally different ball game than if I read that post and I take it the way I want to take it, which we do when there's a written word, we can all take it differently. But when somebody with full passion and tension shows up on video, you are magnetized towards that. And I just, there are so many people that I wish would do more of that. So what I'm hearing is that you open up social media and you read a post and you're like, why did you just not make a video of this? Like you should have talked this out. Yeah. And I think, and I think there's a time and place for both, but there are some people that I never see on video and I Mm -hmm. yearn to see them on video because their words are powerful. And I, just know that they would be so much more powerful if they were spoken versus just typed on a screen. Do you ever have, have you ever, I've experienced this, but have you ever had someone you or some, you write a post and you're like, okay, this is great. And then you make a video of the same exact thing and people are like, oh my God, that's amazing. But like on the, on the text post, you got like nothing. And you're like, I literally just said that like last week, the same exact thing, just not on video. Yes, I actually did a test of this and um, do tell. So I did a, a, I did a long form post. It was really long. And then I took the post and broke it up by paragraph and posted each paragraph. And then, um, I did a video, which ended up being turned into a podcast. And somebody said, I saw what you posted and I kind of got it. But when you explained it, like when I heard you explaining it, I really got it. Mm. And video, I don't know what the stat is right off, but there is a stat that we actually consume and take in video, remember it better than we do actually reading something. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So many good ideas. Like you took one post, broke it into different pieces, and then look at this content strategy we're giving you people right here. Make a post. right break it apart, make a video. So good. And again, like you said, it depends on people's different where they're at and what's going on. Because I know some majority of the time for me, I don't have volume on. So it is sometimes better for me to read something or at least read the text over the video. But then other times, if it looks good enough, I'm like, okay, I'm going to save this. And then when I'm in my quiet space where I can watch something like then I want to hear them like talk it out. So again, everything that t- Chrissy preaches to us every single day in visibility. Um, but yeah, so what, okay, get real with us here. Okay. Every day, I mean, you're being real already, but every day, if there's one thing where you're like, uh, I, you know, like you're the visibility queen. So you're everywhere all the time. That's what we all know is you're everywhere. Yeah. What is the one thing where you're like, uh, like I struggle with either being confident to do that or like, it's just not my thing. Like I'd rather focus everywhere else, but you do it anyways. But like, what is that thing for you? Uh, Is cleaning my house a good answer (laughs) or laundry? Because that's my favorite answer of all time. That's a good good answer. My husband said one day, he said, what would you do if your client saw our house? I said, well, if they've watched any of my videos, they know how bad I hate cleaning and doing laundry. So they would not be surprised. So that's my answer. <laughs> I will take that answer. And I actually really appreciate that a lot because my house is a disaster. And I'm like, you know yeah. what? I always tell people, I'm like, I have priorities. Perfect house put together is not one of them. So we're good. 
Nope. That's right. Um, okay, but let's go to social media. Let's go to okay. visibility. What do you have one where you're like, that's my least favorite thing to do? My least favorite thing to do. That's hard. I don't know because I really don't do stuff I don't like doing. I mean, oh, I guess that, I, I mean, typically do. I do. I just like, I think I'm so maybe, I don't know if I want to say conditioned. I just do it. Um, I mean, sometimes I don't want to send an email. Some days I don't want to. I mean, there are some, don't get me wrong. There are some days I don't want to get on video. It's not every day. But um, yesterday, I even said this. I did three trainings. I was on video, not publicly, but like to my containers. And I'm doing 100 videos this month. And I even said in the group, I was like, I didn't get, I didn't do any videos today, like not public videos, which is the only thing I'm counting. I was like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I, the last thing I want to do is get on video again today. I'm done. I've had enough. And I was just like, give yourself grace. Right. So I don't know that there's anything that I literally dread every single, oh yeah, there is one thing. Okay. This is, this can change and it can vary, but when things don't work and this is very broad, when things don't work, I hate going and trying to do it again. Like I got my texting thing got rejected and I am avoiding it. I don't want to do it. That's why I had to pay somebody to do my um, app because I couldn't figure it out. And so I just avoided it. So when I can't figure something out, I do avoid it because I am spoiled and I figure everything out. <laughs> and that's like the truth. But if I can't figure it out, I will absolutely avoid it until probably I pay somebody to do it. So matter of fact, I'm thinking about switching text platforms um, because somebody in our inner circle uses one. And I was like, I was asking her all these questions. Of, I, I'd rather switch than go mm. through all this craziness for just to get rejected again. It's rejection. That's what it is. Let's just figure mm. it out. It's rejection. I don't want to be rejected by technology. <laughs> and you're so good at technology, though. So I love this, this admittance. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So I'm good at it until I'm not. And then I avoid it. But mm. I mean, some things I've overcame like that, like the funnel software I use, like I've never loved funnel software, I've hated all of it. But I told myself, you have a weekend, you are going to figure this out. Literally do not leave your desk until you figure it out because you like stuff really fast. Nobody can keep up with you. You're the only one that can do this. And so I did. And I did. I I know enough to be dangerous and I can turn around a landing page, a thank you page and an email sequence in about an hour. And that's pretty darn good. So yeah, that that's impressive. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone would love that ability who's in business. Like, yeah. Yeah. Teach I just don't want to do it for everybody else. I just well, prefer right. to do it for me. So I'm going to train my husband to do it. So yeah. I don't have to do it anymore either. But so smart of you. Look at you. So resourceful. Yeah. I know. Oh, I love it. Um, okay. So what, why should someone focus on visibility? Like, like what is the, you know, like it sounds great. Like, yeah, be visible. And, you know, you said be seen and heard, like, but what, why should someone, especially if they're like, let's just say someone's new getting into business or they're, they've been in business, but they really want to take it to the next level. Like, why should that be their number one focus over everything else. Here's what I tell people when they come to me and they say, I'm going to start a business. I don't know what it is yet. What would you recommend I do? I say two things. Get on video. I don't care if you don't know what you're going to do or what you're going to sell. Get on video and build relationships. And the reason I would say that is because we create relationships, even if it's one-sided, when we get on video. People either are very attracted to us or they're very repelled by us. It's a very good thing. It's hard to imagine as a newbie business owner or somebody who's never been visible. And a lot of people are have this huge fear of even TikTok of all platforms, which I've never been hated on on TikTok. Maybe I'm not doing something right. But, I, you know, like it, people have such a fear of being hated on. But like, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. I know this is horrible to say and people don't want to hear this, but it's a good thing. Number one, we grow through that kind of stuff when people reject us, but we also attract a lot of people too. And so I believe that we start building our network. We start building 
our community. I'm not talking about a Facebook group, but our actual online community through us showing up on video. Whether you know what you're going to sell or not, like start doing that because that builds relationships with your audience. We call these one-sided relationships. They're typically called a parasocial relationship. But think about you and Britney Spears. Britney Spears has been your best friend for how long? A long time. A long time. Except for we, except for right now, we we we're we have okay. some issues. But for years, Britney Spears was your best yeah. friend, and you knew everything about her, right? Yeah. That mm-hmm. is a parasocial relationship. What? She didn't know about me. I Christy. mean, she met you once. She met you once, but she didn't know how good yeah. of friends you were until she met you. You just broke my soul. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. Continue. But the other thing is, is that I know we also think. Okay, compared to 2020, everybody is on video, but they're still not. How many people have commented on my TikToks, on my YouTube videos, that I go look at their profile and there's no video? Mm, Not one video. So there is still this this fear, right, of showing up on video and, and being yourself and being authentic. And as many people who have become millionaires doing it, there's still so many people that are holding back. And whether you're a business owner or not, if video scares you, I say do it. And here's why. Because when you do scary things, you build confidence. That is one of the major ways to build confidence. Do the things you're, that are very uncomfortable for you. Because it's going to make everything else in your life easier to deal with. And I know that's crazy, but we're going to come up, we're, we can purposely put ourselves in uncomfortable situations, which I love doing, but there are going to be uncomfortable situations we don't purposely put ourselves in, but we're going to be able to navigate that so much more confidently by stretching and pushing ourselves every opportunity we get on our own. For sure. Okay. So final question, and then we'll go into our fun, uh, rapid fire. Um, okay. so if again, someone's getting started, you already told them like, just start making videos and just start building those relationships, regardless of what your business is or what you have no idea what it is. Just start there. Um, let's say someone has been in business. What is like your top, like two, three, like content strategy. Listen, I'm in your programs. So I know (laughs) there's like a bajillion things and so many tools and resources. And I've learned so much from you that like, you can't, cover and wouldn't cover everything right here. But like, if you were to say like two or three top things, like one, two, three, what someone should do to really start growing their business online, what would that be? Okay. Other than, other than, I mean, obviously video, but like, if it's, you know, you should be, you should be on TikTok or you should, you, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like your top Got three it. things. Got it. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, you're going to post content with, uh, passion, purpose, and potency. One of the three, always. Those are the P's. Um, Number two, be consistent in everything you do, because if you are not consistent, you're not always planting seeds, which meaning you won't reap the harvest, right? But if you are consistent, and it's 99% of the time is what I hear people struggle with is being consistent. Mm -hmm. So be consistent. And I don't have to say video, right? Because we already talked about that. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. The third thing is, uh, get your mind in check. Your mind, just like working out, just like everything else, your mind will give up on you before your body does. Your mind will give up on you before your bank account does. Like it's insane how much like we, our mean girl, our inner mean girl will push us like out of doing what we love because, you know, our brain does try to protect us. Thank you, brain. However, we're not always in fight or flight in everything that happens. And so I think having a really good emotional intelligence, uh, like working on that, working on what's the, what's the truth. You know how this, you know how people say two truths and a lie, like everything you say to yourself, like, is this, is this the truth? Is this the truth? Mm-hmm. Like, is this really true? And then this might be weird, but have conversations with yourself, like really dig deep, voice memo yourself, journal on it. Like, I feel like, our mind again is owning a business is the biggest personal development journey you will ever go on. It is the biggest thing that will literally trip you up and make you feel unworthy, unconfident. Is that a word? Um, but it will, it does. And if we're not constantly working on our personal development, working on our, our mindset, it's going to hurt us in the long run. So I can't just say it's all about visibility because guess what? 
if you're not working on your mind, you're going to have a lot harder time being consistent, putting out content with passion, purpose, and potency. You're going to, you're going to be so concerned about all of that stuff if you're not also working on your mind. So work on your mind. Those are my three. I love that. Cause I do notice like when I'm not working on myself, I'm not showing up as much again, because you get in your head. So I love that, which leads us into perfectly into our rapid fire. So let's start with this. Okay. Best book that you've read for your mindset and business. Um, the two I gave you this morning, I I can't compound effect was my favorite for years, but the four agreements might be better than the compound effect, but they're the compound effect has been my favorite for like 10 years. So I can't like knock it, but the four agreements is really good. And it's a very fast read if you're a reader. So Mm. good to know. What is, what are the main things on your, for you page? Like what is the, what are the topics that you see the most? Like when you open your social media? Oh, um, <laughs> mindset, coaching, marketing. <laughs> Those are the three things. How oh, exciting. and little puppies, little puppies that get on top of turtles or little puppies that get on top of chickens. It's probably because I send these to Ava all the time, but they're so cute. And the, and the chicken or the turtle walks around and the puppy's just like riding on it. It's just... So you guys are getting a turtle? (laughs) So your puppies? I just think it's cute. And it's just like, oh, I just love it. So I watch it over and over and over. I love love that that's like thrown in with like the marketing and all that kind of stuff. So good. Yeah, I know. Uh, You can only have one treat meal for the rest of your life. What do you choose? One treat meal? Yeah. Like if it was your last meal on this planet, like what do you want? Uh, honey truffle chicken at, um, cheesecake factory with the birthday celebration cheesecake. So specific. I'm obsessed you with the treat answer. meal. Like that's my, when I think of food, that's my favorite meal. It's fried chicken with honey and truffle sauce dribble, drizzled over it with mashed potatoes and then the cheesecake. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this mainly because this is why we're friends and this is why you're my mentor because so many other people I've asked that and they're like, um, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, what? You don't have a go-to like favorite f- meal? Like I know exactly what I'm ordering if it's my last meal. I know. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for knowing. Okay. Now um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. So kind of keeping along the same lines, what's one movement or exercise you enjoy doing that makes you feel powerful? Lifting weights, which I do not do enough of, but I'm hoping I get to do this with 75 healthy. But yes, when, and here's the thing, I didn't ever know it was my thing until it was. And I think it's where you can always constantly see improvement. I'm not a runner. Don't ask me to run. I'm not doing it. But like, you can see the weights go up. And then when people like notice, they're like, look at your arms. I'm like, what? I have arms. (laughs) <laughs> like I didn't know that was a thing. And so, yeah, it's just, I, it just makes you feel strong. I think it also makes me feel very, very confident when I do it too. So I feel yeah. confident when I go on a walk, but I feel like a bad yeah. when I'm lifting weights. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. So you can only use one form of social media for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? You mean platform? Yes. Instagram. Why? Because it has everything video, stories, carousels, pictures, um, and threads. Mm. It has, it has all of the above and all my favorite people I follow on there too. So, and Gary, is that the Gary v on Instagram? Is that the first social media app that you open each day? Yeah. If you Absolutely. like, just want to scroll for fun, like that's your go-to. Yeah. That, I would say Instagram first, Facebook second, mm. talks third. Got it. Who is one powerful woman that has inspired you in your life? Oh my gosh. I don't know if there's just one. There's so many. You said these were easy, by the way. Thank you. Um, (laughs) You're welcome. uh, So probably right now, like I'm really, really paying attention. I mean, to one of my mentors who is Haley Forbes and she lives in Scotland and I just love like everything about her life and her business and 
that sounded like a girl crush. Um, but I also love that all that she's been through and I love the way she teaches and yeah, that's a great, that's a great answer. Oh, uh, but also, I also like really am obsessed with Taylor Swift's Instagram right now too. So there's also that. Oh, okay. So not just the Taylor, but like the Instagram of Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Did I, you see I'm, her and Beyonce were on there this morning together? No. At her I, premiere? No, I don't follow Taylor. That's why I said all oh, her Instagram's good because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but she has the comments turned off. You can't comment. You can only um, like. If I was her, that's what I would do too. Yeah. That's what a lot of, I mean, Brittany does that too. So, um, so she was with Beyonce. I saw she went to someone because the, the, the premiere of her thing just came out. Right. And so I saw she like went to one of the cinemas and like stopped it and like talked to them. So that's cool. Oh, I didn't see Beyonce. That's really cool. Look at that girl power happening. I know. And I think everybody thinks that they're like this, right? Because they both are like trying, like they're both, one of them is going to gross the highest tour, right? It's so neck and neck. But I think they all, I think the public pits them against each other. And there she went and showed up. So for sure. I love that. And like you, you and so many people always say, right? Like there's, we don't have to have a scarcity mindset. Like, there is enough for everyone to go around. And so, yes, one of them is going to pull ahead, but like, is the other one going to be upset that she made a few thousand? Le- like, you know what I mean? Like you're still living your best life. Like, come They're on. So in overflow, it doesn't really matter at this yeah. point. We're talking, we're not talking like that. Nobody's missing out. Nobody's hurting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, they are so good. Um, okay, cool. I love it. One song that makes you feel powerful. One song that makes me feel really powerful. I'm on, again, I'm on a Taylor Swift kick right now. So, um, I'm really into cruel summer and I'm sad that summer's over. So I, I, the bridge, I can sing really good and I know all the words. So it just like hits me and I love it when my Jeep top is off and I'm like screaming it. It's just so good. (laughs) So good. Now we can all go listen to that. Um, okay. So last one, if there was one powerful piece of advice you could leave for your daughter, what would it be? Hmm. Do the things that bring you joy. Like seriously, do the things that bring you joy. She actually, it was funny. She asked me if she had to keep following somebody on social media. And I said, listen, if they don't bring you joy and follow them, mm-hmm. like I, if anybody makes you feel weird on social media or doesn't make you feel good about yourself, unfollow. Like, and that's, you know, if it doesn't bring you joy, don't do it. I mean, yeah. obviously there's some things we have to do, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can, you have a lot of options in life where we can say yes and no to things and say yes to the things that bring you joy. I love it. I have two more things. Number one, um, where can people find you, get more, whatever? You have your amazing like uh, visibility for uh, introverts. So where would you like people? I know Instagram's your thing, but where would you like people to come hang out with you and like learn all the awesomeness? Because if you guys don't follow Chrissy yet, like homegirl puts out so much content every single day. And I literally, it's the first thing in my feed when I open up Instagram and it's all the things of like tips and like all in your, all in your feels. You're like, Chrissy, like stop. Number one, stop being in my head. Number two, like, why are you yelling at me? Like in the best way possible. I'm like, okay, yes, you're, (laughs) you're right. I will go do that. Fine, Chrissy. So it's like, it's like the best. It's the best. Like I get motivated, but also like, what do you always say? Activated. I always get yeah. motivated and activated, but also a little frustrated with myself, like all in the best way to be like, okay, I can do this. Anyways, yeah. that was my little spiel. So where would you like people to come and find you and hang out with you? And I'll add all the links so you don't have to get yeah. all those. Yeah, definitely Instagram. And then anything about what's going on is at the visibilityqueen.com. Yes. So go find, get all the Chrissy in your life. Any last words? that you would like to leave for our friends that maybe we didn't touch on. You're like, oh, I should have said this, or I wish Danielle would have asked me that. Or here's my last motivational piece to make people go do the things to live their best lives. Any last words for our friends before we say goodbye? Only because it's on the top of my mind. There are no rules, like especially as a business owner and the way you run your life. I think so many of us have been conditioned to think we have to do things a certain way. So again, like the advice I would give my daughter, like find your joy find what is for you and um, consume as much of the things that you're passionate about as you possibly can. Mm. Mic drop. And with that, 
Thank you, Chrissy, for being here. You are so freaking amazing. I just love you to pieces. And I'm so grateful for everything that you've done for me and my mindset and my business. And so it has been a joy being here with you. And now I'm going to go listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes. Bye, friend. Bye. I'll remind you at the end of every single episode, you do not owe the world pretty, but you do owe yourself to step into your personal power because you, my friend, are a powerhouse woman. Go out and prove it to yourself.